weekend, the latest Matthew Vaughn star-studded spy film, Argyle, drops in theaters. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Argyle. Are you excited for it? Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Now, this movie is surrounded by a lot of mystery. Now, even the trailers themselves pose the question, who is the real agent Argyle? Which in the movie is an important question. But there's an even more interesting question surrounding the project itself, because Argyle is supposed to be based off of a book from Ellie Conroy. But Ellie Conroy is the character in the movie. It's based on a book. It is based on a book. Yes. Okay, so I'm confused by this because I... Has this Good. book been published yet? It's coming out in January. Yes. The author of the book, mm -hmm. the name of that person... Ellie Conway. Ellie is also one of your principal characters in Argyle, the author within the story. Correct. So we don't know who actually wrote the book. Who's the person that came up with this Argyle idea? Many are asking the question, is Taylor Swift the real Ellie Conway? And the whole thing is incredibly meta as you dive into the mystery of what on earth is going on here? What is Matthew Vaughn cooking? With all that said, this was one of my most anticipated movies of the year because I like Matthew Vaughn and because it looked fun, different, and interesting. But did it live up to my expectations? Let's get started talking about the good. And when it comes to Argyle, the first word that comes to mind is fun. It's a film that doesn't take itself too seriously. It provides a bunch of charismatic movie stars, a bunch of opportunities to be charismatic movie characters, doing all sorts of wild outlandish things, drop jokes, and sometimes quite literally wink at the camera. Now this is a spy movie that is both celebrating and sending up spy films. It loves spy films, but it leans so hard into all of the tropes and takes them to the most extreme and over-the-top versions to poke fun at all the stuff that spy movies have always done and even things that Matthew Vaughn has done in his own spy films. And so it's just filled with energy. It is intentionally way over the top, way excessive in everything that it's going for. And for me, that was a lot of fun. Matthew Vaughn talked about how one of the big inspirations for this film was Romancing the Stone. So we watched movies like Charade, we watched Romancing the Stone, yeah. and um, and they loved it. And actually my daughter said, why don't we make movies like this? If you're not familiar with the movie, essentially it came out actually 40 years ago this year, and it was kind of inspired by Raiders of the Lost Ark in many ways, but they thought, what if you took Raiders of the Lost Ark and combined it with a romance novel, and so it would appeal to more women, and they made this Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner film called Romancing the Stone about an author of romance novels that gets swept away essentially in a romance novel as this very Raiders of the Lost Ark-esque adventure film, and that's very much what this movie does. Last year, a movie came out called The Lost City that also was playing off the Romancing the Stone formula with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum doing this. That one was a more direct riff on Romancing the Stone, whereas this film takes that idea of an author that gets mixed up in the genre that they're a part of, and but takes it in the spy direction and leads way more extreme into the premise of everything. It's so much more meta, as you can see in the trailers, where the author is like predicting the future and gets swept up in everything. And who's the real Agent Argyle? What on earth is going on in the story? And so it, it goes off in its own direction while also very clearly taking inspiration from Romancing the Stone. To that point, this movie is very much going through all of the different spy films of the decade that Matthew Vaughn loved. Most of my movies are always, I call them a love letter to the movies I loved right. as a kid or which I felt could be reinvented. And referencing them in all these different ways. In fact, if I were to say all of the movies it's referencing, at a certain point, that just becomes spoilers for this movie because it gives you a hint as to where things are actually going with the film. And this is a movie that is just jam-packed with twists and turns. You didn't see that coming. 
there's so much that the trailers don't show with where the story goes, which characters are what, who can you trust, what's really going on. They did a good job of really only showing stuff from the first like 40% of the film in the trailers. Of course, you got to talk about the cast here. It's very star studded. One of the more prominent ones is Henry Cavill as Argyle. And he's not really in the movie that much. This is not a movie starring Henry Cavill, but he's a pivotal piece. And because he's such a movie star and such a presence, you can just put him in there a little bit and have these little moments where he appears on screen or does something and it makes a big impact. But if you're going in wanting a lot of Henry Cavill, that's not exactly what this is, but he's used really nicely and it knows who's, who its audience is and how they respond to Henry Cavill and has a lot of fun with that. The, our two leads in the film are actually Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell, who are the people that kind of go on the main adventure in the real world. And both of them are in many ways playing against type and what they have to do in this film. And that's just a lot of fun. When you take someone like Sam Rockwell and you make him the intense spy that's killing dudes left and right and throw Howard in the middle of all of that, that change of pace is fun, but they're also actors with enough versatility to them that they can do it in a convincing fashion and play the many layers to their characters. So especially with Howard, who's taken on this big, gigantic adventure through all of it from isolated writer to person in the middle of this global conspiracy, just to do a lot with that. And she can play the different pieces. And then Sam Rockwell uh, is just such a fun actor that's so funny, so energetic and can find the humor in the little moments. And he gets to do a lot of that in this film. But there's all kinds of people that show up for just a little bit in the film. Everyone's having a lot of fun. And you can tell that it was a fun movie to make because it just kind of oozes through as you watch the film. It's very much highly stylized Matthew Vaughn adventure here. The film gets very silly, which for some people, <laughs> we'll talk about in that in the negative section of this film. But it's very much Matthew Vaughn leaning into it and embracing the absurdity of the genre and all sorts of sequences you know, you can see in the trailer the fun with the cat, but it goes in so many different directions of the wild, crazy stuff that happens in this movie. But it's all energetic. It's all very lively, unexpected, clever at times. For me, it, it felt like a good date movie where my wife doesn't really like kick-ass, Kingsmen. They're just too violent, too extreme, too crass. Not really her thing. But bringing Matthew Vaughn energy to a PG-13 spy movie that is inspired by romancing the stone, that has a bunch of movie stars being charismatic and fun and has Henry Cavill like looking at the camera and smiling at it and winking. That's a fun date night for the two of us. And that's what this movie felt like to me. A fun time at the movies, doesn't take itself too seriously, it's having fun with the genre, it's very twisty, very turny, keeps you guessing as to where you're headed, and something a little bit different. But there's a lot more to talk about with this film, so let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. And as I go into this, this isn't necessarily good or bad things, these are just things that need to be discussed in terms of this movie. And with this movie, there's a lot you gotta talk about. First off, the movie is based off of a book, but not really, not at all. My wife bought the book, read the book because she really enjoyed the trailer, and she'd seen the trailer, read the book, expecting that in the book. And she goes, this is nothing like the trailer. I expected the trailer and that's not what this book is at all. And if you read the book, expecting that in the movie, that's not what it is at all. In fact, when the credits started to roll, I asked my wife, so how similar is it to the book? She goes, it's nothing like the book, except for a lady in a gold dress and a couple of character names because it's such an adaptation. Now in interviews, Matthew Vaughn has explained some of the background of all of this, where he described the book, Argyle, is book one. So book one is being published. The movie, Argyle, is book four. And book four, which is the movie's based around. Okay. You know, you have to, you know, 
listen, Mr. Lucas was clever enough to start Star Wars at episode four, so why not us? <laughs> so he's pulling a Star Wars. We got a new hope, but the book is actually episode one of Phantom Menace. And without spoiling things too much, there's just one scene in the movie that's actually from the book. You'll read book one, which I hope to actually shoot next. Um, so you jump back to book one. Book one, yes. Okay. There is a scene of book one in the movie. Um, just one. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but it's a very strange backstory. And Matthew Vaughn talked about how he enjoyed romancing the stone and was inspired to make a movie like that. Then he read the manuscript for Argyle and he had this idea of what if you made a movie about the author writing the book itself. We, it, I sort of like, I love the idea of what would happen if JK Rowling met a wizard and was real. And that's where the movie came from, but it's not actually an adaptation of the book. And we don't know who wrote the book. <laughs> Ellie Conway is the character in the movie. They have not revealed who actually wrote this thing. So we don't really know what's going on here. And there's just a bunch of theories surrounding all of it. Third thing to talk about in the mixed aspects here. The trailer does a good job of not revealing too much about the movie. Matthew Vaughn said in interviews, he told the studio. To Universal's credit, I said you can only use the first 28 minutes of the film. And they stuck to those rules. Oh, wow. So it is, you know, everyone goes, oh, the trailer has got all the good bits in. I'm like, you guys have seen nothing yet. And I don't think that's entirely true. There's the bulk of the trailers from about the first 40%, but it is further along than the first 28 minutes. And there's little shots in the trailer that were just images that are from the back half of the film. But in terms of plot stuff, all the plot stuff that's revealed in the trailer, that is all from the first half of the movie. Another one to talk about here, I touched on this a little bit. Henry Cavill and John Cena, they're barely in the film. Same with, uh, with Dua Lipa, the, the singer, barely in the film. Final thing to talk about in the mixed is there is a mid credit scene and the mid credit scene is the, the big reference to the actual book where my wife read the book, as I mentioned before, and she said to me, I don't think this scene will make any sense if you haven't read the book. Like, and I didn't know what was going on. You watch the scene, you're like, what? What is this? And then it, it teases some stuff. And it, like, I don't think it, it doesn't really track. It's not clear what's going on in the scene if you haven't read the book. I don't know how to read, so I haven't read the book. So I didn't know what was going on. So it's like a curiosity to check it out, but you'll be confused as you're watching it. Sorry for so much in this mid, uh, this mixed section. There's just a lot to talk about with this film because it has an interesting backstory and some weird things about it. From there, let's move on to the bad. With this film, the best and the worst thing is its excess. That is its biggest asset. That is its biggest liability. It just goes for it. So this is a very silly film. It can be a very goofy film. And... You will either love that or you will hate that, but it goes for it. Just without shame or embarrassment, goes for it. Along those same lines, excess is the key word here. Over the top is the key word. The movie's just way too long. Where you go, this would have been a better film if you cut 20, 25, maybe even 30 minutes off of it and just make this brisk, twisty, turny film. And there's a few too many plot twists some of them work, some of them don't work. There's a few too many endings to the film where some of them, you're like, that was cool. Wait, we're still going? We're still revealing things? Another false ending? Like, what's going on here? The phrase lack of restraint I saw in a lot of reactions to this film, even from people that really enjoyed it, that because it just goes for it, it didn't know when to stop. It didn't know how to pull back, how to get the right length, anything like that. So it's just too much there's too much in there there's with everything it's just all a little bit too much too many characters too many cameos and you think if they could pull it back pick the best ideas not just every idea you'd have a much stronger film than the one that we ended up getting it's also very uneven because there's so much in there because it's trying so much because there's so many characters if you really like the henry cavill stuff you'll love that and then he disappears for a long time. It, there's a lot of elements like that where you just have so many things that get a big reaction from you. Oh, I loved that. Oh, there's not any more of that. Oh, I don't like this. And there's a lot of it. That's what I say when it's just excess, lack of restraint. It goes for it. It's over the top. 
everything will get a reaction. And I imagine the film would be pretty polarizing, even in some of the reactions that I've seen from people. A bunch of people, oh, it's an absolute blast. I had so much fun. Others, this movie's awful. And then the Rotten Tomatoes score, last I checked, was it was at a 38%. And so you have a movie that a lot of people are really enjoying, but a lot of others are like, wow, that thing is all over the place. And that did not work. And that doesn't really surprise me. I enjoyed what I got, but I can absolutely understand why this movie will not be for a lot of people. And then just on the technical side, some of the CGI, some of the visual visuals just don't look good. And that doesn't normally bother me, except when you have a movie that costs $200 million. When you have a director that's been doing this for 20 years, has worked on big, gigantic projects that look better than this movie, that had lower budgets than this movie, you go... This should have been better. This should have looked better. These effects, whatever went wrong here, whatever went on behind the scenes, this just looks cheaper than it actually was. That's a problem. Be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what did you think about Argyle. Also, this weekend, I will be ranking all of Matthew Vaughn's films. That was a lot of fun to rewatch each of them and then dive into some interviews with him as he talked through his career and watching interviews from different phases of career and that kind of his career. And it, that informed so much of the ranking. So I'm, I'm real excited for that one. And then also, this weekend, I am at Megacon in Florida. So if you're in Florida, or if you can get to Florida, I'd highly encourage you to come out. I'd love to meet you. We got a bunch of panels planned. All that information is down below in the description. With Argyle, this is a film where the trailer really is a good test of how you'll probably react to the film. If you saw the trailer and went, Ugh, that looks too goofy, you will watch the movie and think it's too goofy and silly. If you watch the trailer and you're like, oh, that looks like a lot of fun. I'd like to see that. I'm pretty sure you'll have fun with this movie. As I mentioned at the beginning, this was one of my most anticipated films of the year. And now having seen it, I, I thought it was a good movie. It's definitely not a great movie, but I also didn't leave the film disappointed. The ways that it wasn't necessarily great didn't detract from my overall satisfaction with the film because while it's only a good movie, I thought it was a great date movie and that's what I was hoping for. A great time at the movies with my wife. I had fun with it. Some of you will too, but if you didn't like the trailer, the movie's not gonna win you over. Overall, it's a B on the entertainment scale, a 7.5 out of 10. And if you liked the trailer, see it. If you didn't like the trailer, skip it. Come back this weekend for my ranking of the Matthew Vaughn films. If you're in Florida or can get to Florida, be sure to come on out to Megacon. I would love to meet you there. We got some cool panels planned. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye.